Hi guys, it's Castro72, and I'm here again for Nintendo Nation with another Throwback Thursday game. This one um, is not a particularly good game. Uh, it's for the NES, and it's called Captain Planet and the Planet Tears. It's particularly notable because it was based on a early 90s cartoon, which I believe had some sort of ecological theme where I guess there's a team of heroes who are out to save the planet from pollution um, and here I think uh, they're depicting the woman Gaia who is I guess in essence the earth spirit who calls upon these five children to wear these magic rings each of which uh, have some sort of elemental power and when you combine the ring power together it forms Captain Planet who is uh, the titular superhero of the cartoon and I'll be honest I was I was never a fan uh, I, I've seen it and I, I knew of it uh, it played on WGN here in Chicago and it, it other than I, I would say the animation was nice because I think it was probably farmed out to an animation studio somewhere in Japan so it was somewhat anime but obviously catered to American taste so you didn't get those Dragon Ball Z type characters um, anyway Mindscape uh, which is actually a prolific publisher in the PC uh, market uh, brought this game to the NES. Now Mindscape uh, sort of had a very spotty past uh, on the NES. They never really did bring out anything that was too good. Uh, on the PC, I, I think they're well regarded as a good publisher, but on the NES and actually the SNES, they really didn't bring out anything that, that was very good. Um, the only good game I could think of is Mule, which was a port of an arcade game. And obviously they brought a, brought this game to the NES. Um, let's see, how can I describe it? It was pretty excruciating actually when I played it. It's, it's a shooter and I guess each of the powers of the rings that the teenagers uh, had were sort of involved in the ship's firepower. I, I really didn't get it. Like, I, I pressed the, the select button to select between fire, earth, wind, water, and heart. And each of them did something different. But really, I, I just kind of kept the, uh, the, the firepower uh, as my main weapon because all the other ones seemed kind of useless. Uh, but truth be told, I did watch a speed run of this game and I saw the guy cycle through and as you can see this at at type um, this at at type creature that or I guess it's not creature but it was a mechanical uh, enemy that would uh, that I had to shoot the legs at was better taken care of in the speed run with the wind power which kind of is this revolving I don't know whirlwind that goes around the plane um, other things of note about the actual Planeteers cartoon, um, I know each of the characters uh, back then, I guess, fulfilled some sort of politically correct uh, children's programming rule where each child had to be of a different ethnicity. I think there was one, the, the leader, if you called him the leader, with the, with the firepower was a white kid. Uh, then there was a black kid who had the power of earth. The Asian kid had the power of water. I think another white kid, but who was a girl, had the power of wind. And then some Mexican kid had the power of heart, which was actually sort of a nebulous power. I, I really didn't know what it did. Like, a fire obviously produced fire. Uh, earth produced earth, like rocks and stuff. And I believe wind I had like tornadoes water had like tidal waves and heart I, I could never figure out what exactly it did but I think it was the ability to communicate with animals and, and nature or something like that um, it's funny because like like 
like the Power Rangers, I th I always thought I thought the the main character, the white kid, got the best power, which was fire, which is a very uh, offensive mood. I move, and like the kid who was black had the the earth power, which I I mean I don't I mean I I really don't know if there was any intent, but. Was there an intent to give the, the white kid the fire power and then the black kid the earth power, which had invo involved dirt? And then the Asian kid had water, which I guess would entail, I don't know, some sort of connection between, I don't know, living in Japan, which is surrounded by water, and, um, I, I don't know. But I, I've all, when, when I was a kid, I kind of thought, geez, you know, like, why not give the black kid the fire power? But... I mean, but I digress. Again, different levels of political correctness, I guess, were at work back in the early 1990s. Um, other than that, uh, I know in the next levels, I mean, like right now you're just seeing me guide this, I think it was called the Eco Cruiser, over, over, um, over this uh, sea-type landscape or background. And try to you know just try to get to the end. If you do happen to get to the end, I think you get to this base that you blow up, and then you form Captain Planet, and you go into some sort of labyrinth uh, where you're flying around like horizontal. I mean vertically instead of horizontally, or maybe you you're, you're flying vertically and horizontally. I can't remember. But the only reason I know that is because I was watching the speed run on this game. Other than that. <sighs> very very boring game the ship doesn't control very well as you can see I like I've crashed multiple times all over the place and and the waves of enemies move in these ridiculous patterns like uh, one of some of them move in a pattern which I thought was very reminiscent of the game Mega Mania on the Atari 2600 and like just little little kind of blobs and mechanical generic things flying in the air that are moving in weird patterns some of them aren't even ships uh like and oh this oil base was just killer i was like there's gobs of oil coming up from this oil refinery i, I ended it there because i was like how do they expect me to get past that anyway uh yeah this game isn't that good but not many people know about it so i wanted to share it thanks a lot guys